Good morning everyone, welcome to Patchwork Cutters Club. My name's Tracy Mann from Tracy Mann Cakes and I'm here today to show you some cocoa butter painting. So lots of you may have remembered me from being uh, here quite a while ago. I've been on holiday, so I'm back now. Marion, I think I did Marion's off this week. I think potentially she might be, maybe she's on grand, grandchildren patrol. Uh, but this week you've got me and I'm going to be showing you some of the basic stuff. So we're going to actually paint a poppy. Now, um, I was thinking the other day, I was walking down the side of my house and there's poppies everywhere, literally everywhere. They've been seeding left, right and centre. And it just occurred to me and I thought, well, we always tend to associate poppies actually with November, but actually it's out now and it's a really lovely flower. So we're going to paint one. I thought that's what we're going to do. So we're going to paint a poppy today. Um, hopefully I will be able to talk you all through it. We're going to do it with cocoa butter painting. I'm just reloading my page to make sure I'm live, which I'm sure I am. There I am. Um, I've just done a live on another page, so I'm sure they'll be running across from the other page now. Yeah, it looks like they are. Um, so we're going to set all of this up in just a second so we're going to be using some of the patchwork cutters I've already set the plaque up I set the plaque up yesterday um, and the idea behind these plaques is you paint them and you could store them to a degree and then you could use them on cake so you could literally then just take your plaque and put it on top of a cake pipe a bit of um royal icing maybe around the outside edge and lo and behold there you go you've got an instant plaque um, that can be used on a cake so that sounds like a good plan to me and these patchwork cutters are really good for doing this kind of work they're lovely and simple to use they are not complicated and they make brilliant embossers so if you are one of these people that would really love to have a go at painting but you find the whole thing you know I'm not an artist is what I get told regularly you don't need to be an artist you just need to be able to have a paintbrush in your hand and just follow inside the lines really for patchwork cutters so nice and straightforward but I do also have um, lots of courses on my website which is written below at the moment um, where you'll be able to go on there and see lots of other sort of cake painting classes that we do we do a beginner's cocoa butter painting course so if you are inspired by what I'm going to show you this morning and you want to get more involved in it um, then there are other videos on here you can watch but also you can join the cake school I have a very lovely community um, that all love their painting and cupcake bouquets and all these other bits and pieces that we do so lots of nice interesting things going on there as well lovely to see some of you so I've just seen some of you on the other groups I've seen some of the other names coming up here now so here I am lovely for you to join me if you have missed this live at all or you've joined later on um, you can watch it back it stays on here it also goes on to my youtube channel so if you've ever lost track of anything you think well i'd like to watch that back um, if you go onto my youtube channel there you've it. that's it coming up there now you will find these videos on there as well once i've uploaded them i tend to run the video first and then we'll upload it later on the other thing that I'm really into at the moment is TikTok. Um, so if you have the TikTok app and you want to follow me on that, again, it's at Tracy Man Cakes. The aim of that is to be doing lots of short, and I mean really short, less than a minute, um, reminding tutorials of some of our cookie cutters. Um, there are other things on there like wedding cakes and various things but it is really about showing you how to do these cookies very quickly so anything like that even a little bit of painting very quickly so if you want to join me on there you are very welcome to pop over and have a look right let's get cracking with this so we have got uh let's put the camera down so we can see what's going on take that away so today we're looking at the poppy cutter so these are on my website so if you do want to buy one i have got some in stock um <coughs> excuse me i'm losing my voice because i've been talking for the last hour um so that's the poppy that's what it is again it sort of indicates red so you would sort of think yeah okay that's for um poppy season but i just thought it's poppy season now so we're going to do an orange poppy and we're going to combine that with this set here which is the butterflies i love this set Do you know what when i had it when i was younger and marion <laughs> i had this honestly i don't know how long she's had this out but i can clearly remember having it when i was about maybe 12 or 13 so it's been out a long time i think um these I found quite tricky to cut out. I know there's a little method for doing it now and I've learnt it as I've gone along. But actually the little ones make fabulous embossers. So if you're really into doing lots of like little cupcakes and stuff, there's loads of tiny little butterflies in this. Look, you can see them on here. And they're great. They really are. They make really nice um, little embossers. So if you are really into doing cupcakes and stuff, then that definitely 
is a good thing for you. So I'm just cleaning up around myself. Just prior to coming on the live, I managed to throw half a bottle of water across the room. So I'm still finding stuff everywhere. Right, okay, so let's get this underway. I'm gonna move that out of the way. For those of you that haven't seen any cocoa butter painting before, this is a chrome food warmer. And in the middle of it, you'll see a tea light. And that tea light is being lit and that's creating heat. So we're gonna put on top of that a metal paint palette. Now the metal paint palette will start to get hot and while it's getting hot it's going to melt the cocoa butter. So that's the product that we're going to be using that's going to carry the dusting colours which is what's around here that we're going to use on our cake. So um, edible dusting colours look something like that. These are sugar flare ones. Um, we do a kit, a beginner's cocoa butter painting kit, um, which is very useful for doing um, cakes. We're all also more luster colour dust like this one, which belongs to Sugar and Crumbs, which is a wonder dust. Again, we do have a selection of these on the website. We're running out of bright gold, though. They seem to be going mad for that at the moment. I don't know what people are doing in gold, but we seem to be going through a fair amount of it. Um, but these are really nice colours as well. So we use that. I do tend to use lots of different brands i also use edible art which is another brand i like their ice pink sorbet which is a really lovely pink color just seeing if i've got a pot available i think i'm oh yeah there we go ice pink sorbet it's just like a lovely sort of candy pink color let me take the lid off to be able to see it a little bit better but i'm trying to resist painting in pink today because i get told off for painting in lots of pink by kelly so there we go that's a really nice color so i tend to go with um the colors i like from the brands not necessarily all one brand i tend to sort of move around a little bit and the majority of them are sugar flare but i do also have other ones so in the time i've been talking you can see the cocoa butter is now melting so it's heading and that's because this has got hot and in turn it's melting that now i've got three paint brushes here today so the paint brushes i use are numbered now the reason they're numbered it helps me to identify which brush you need to be using when you're painting. So I will always say we're now using paintbrush number two, number three, or whatever it is. And you'll be able to look at your own paintbrush and know that you've got the right brush in your hand. Again, you're gonna find these, we've got the sets of these on the website, or they are in the cocoa butter kits as well. So um, it just means that it makes it a little bit more easier for me to be able to teach you more than anything else. You need uh, a little bit of kitchen roll, which I had a minute ago. Yes, I have a little bit of kitchen mold just to clean your brush or paper towel move that over there and then i will bring these in i'll get rid of the kits because they're in my way let's move those out of the way pop that there there we go and this is the little plaque that i've set up so this plaque here i have iced some i've used color splash navy which is like a gel color and i've made a nice pale blue color as my background and then i have stamped my um, pop it on there I just want an outline I don't want it to be sort of dug in deep into the into the sugar paste because it's not going to help me if it's dug in really deep so I did this yesterday so it's all set now but if you do push it in it's gone in too far just rub your finger over it and it will sort of bring it back up again um, that takes the um, edge of it because if it's too deep you'll find you'll have problems with the um uh, paint sort of disappearing down some of the holes so it just needs to be careful the only other color i'm missing actually now looking at this is black so let me just grab some black so i meant to actually tell you what colors i was using today i didn't do that did i let's have a look so the colors in here today we have got let me just tip this in here there we go right that's an edible art color so we have got black orange so we've got sunset orange which is a really strong orange color love that color white and then we've got primrose and then we've got moss green over there now there's loads of greens available um i like spring green moss green gooseberry green woodland green they are all sugar flare colors they're really nice colors um lots of those used in um lots of the flower type painting it's amazing the shades of green i always say to people go and have a look outside you'll see how many shades of green there are on you when you get out there and you go oh yeah look at that i never saw that before but there you go it's all there before i move that over let me just turn that around so i can mix it so we're going to start with let's start with paintbrush number two so I've got a dotting tool rolling towards me, but that might be in use later. We'll see how we go. Right, so we've got paintbrush number two. So in order to mix our paint, 
We're going to dip it into the cocoa butter like that. And then we're going to pick up some of the moss green and we're going to mix it together. Now, moss green or any of these colours is very dark on their own. So we would then go across to the white, grab some white and we'll brighten it up. You can see it changing. Dip it back in there or grab some white, mix it again. So the thicker the paint, the more dusting colours in there. If the paint is very thin, then you've got a lot of cocoa butter in there. When it's thin, it can be quite sort of translucent. Now, there are times when that works really well. If you're doing a certain project, it can work really well. There are most of the time, though, you want it to be a little bit thicker than what we've got at the moment. Right, let's now mix that up and see what we've got. So we've lightened that up massively because that's what we want to do to start with. I'm sure lots of you have probably got poppies in your garden at the moment. I couldn't believe how many we've got. I think what you've got them, you've got them um, everywhere. <laughs> we've certainly got a lot. There we go. OK. They're not orange, though. They're yellow, actually. But I decided to go for this. Right, let's bring all this back in. Make sure we can see everything. I'll just turn that around a bit so we can see that. This metal paint palette does get very hot, so you have to be a little bit careful. Right, so we will start with paintbrush two. For the moment we'll see how we go with that one um, we will just come down here and just put a bit of color down it'll immediately lift it i find it nicer to paint on a pale background a pastel background rather than painting on white although there are times where painting on white is appropriate um, like if you're doing a snow scene or something it tends to be on white but uh, it's entirely up to you so we'll get these leaves done to start with like that. See, we're doing them quite nice soft colours to start with and we can darken them up later on. Better off starting light and going back the other way. There we go. Like so. Like that. that stem goes under there. So these are the leaves of this poppy. It's quite a nice flower. It is a fixed shape, so it only goes in one direction, but it actually is quite nice. It's a nice cake topper if you fancied doing a just a nice flower. I think what I'm trying to do today is show you that um, this is um, just one flower. I've got somebody cutting a hedge directly outside my unit door conveniently right now. So if you can hear a hedge trimmer going on outside, I shall go out and tell them off in a minute. <laughs> it's getting louder and louder. I think he's getting nearer and nearer sure you can hear it by now right there we go so that's that one let's go this way so when you're using a slightly wider brush um, it'll be because you've got a larger surface area to cover when the surface area gets smaller or you've got detail then you obviously decrease the size of your brush so if you've got um, a much smaller area to paint then you would go down a brush so you would go down to say paintbrush number one for example and if that's too big you go down to a zero and so on you just keep going okay don't you just love people cutting hedges at all the wrong times but anyway never mind I wasn't cutting hedges a minute ago right let's turn that round Again, also turn it round. Don't make it difficult for yourself. Don't sort of always try and paint in one direction. If you need to move it so that you can paint slightly differently, then do so. Now with cocoa butter painting, we move around so we don't just stick to one area. So we'll paint a bit, we'll move on, and we'll come back and paint more on it later on. And the reason we do that is because the cocoa butter needs to dry. You don't want to be painting over cocoa butter until it dries. Now, normally it dries quite quickly. This time of year, it's pretty good. It's not too bad at the moment. Um, the minute it starts to get really warm, and when we're talking really warm here, we are talking sort of maybe August time when it's really starting to warm up, you will find it will take a lot, lot longer to dry. In that case, I tend to stick things in the fridge sometimes just to kind of speed things up a little bit. So I'm going to that down there okay go down the stem as well don't want to miss that bit out I can just about get my brush down there I mean I could have gone in with a paintbrush one but I think I'm just about managing 
with the brush that I've got. There we go. Okay, so that's the start of it there. Oh, nearly chuck that over there. Dusting colour always seems to end up on there, no matter what I do. Now we're going to clean our brush. We're going to move that up there, and we're going to take hold of our paintbrush, and we're going to just wipe it in there like that. Okay. There we go make sure it's all nice and clean before we then go and add in another colour. You can go to the sink and wash it all up, but it just takes a bit of extra time. It's just as easy just to do it like that. Okay. Let's bring that back in again. And we turn this round. So the idea behind this today is we we're going to do an orange poppy, but obviously we don't want an orange that's quite as bright as that. So again, we're going to do the same thing as we did with the green. We're going to pop it into the cocoa butter, pick up some orange, you can see how bright that is. That really is a very, very bright orange. Go into the white, mix some of the white in here. Like so. I might just pop out and see if that's my landlord and see if he can go and cut the hedge on the other side. <laughs> He's getting nearer, I think. I don't know if you can hear it, but I definitely can. Let's mix a bit more in there. White can be quite tricky to mix. Sometimes it can get quite lumpy. So you do have to kind of press it down. I'm rolling the brush as well. Don't sort of do this with the brush because you will actually cause problems with the hairs on the brush. Okay, so we just kind of, let's try that as a base colour and see what we've got. There we go, that's all right. Like that. I thought we might have an orange one. There's plenty of orange poppies around. There's lovely blue ones as well. Uh, it's a bit of a challenge in our family to actually get a blue one to to actually stay alive because they're quite tricky to, to um, keep going, poppies, blue ones, apparently. All right. That racket stopped now, thank goodness. All right. I'm just going to stick my head out the door and make sure he's not going to start again. Hold on, I'll be back. All right, no, he's not next to my building, so I just have to check that because I don't want him getting any nearer. <laughs> right, let's carry on. Around we go. So look at this soft colour that's coming out here of the bright orange. You wouldn't believe actually that that colour could come from just a, such a strong colour. So never be put off by how strong a colour that dust comes out. I think people forget that they can add in um, white, obviously, to make it a much, much softer colour. So I think it's more sort of heading in the sort of peachy direction at the moment, but we're going to add a bit more orange to it later. So it will look a bit more on the orange scale, but it's a very nice colour. He's still cutting the hedge, but he's not as close as he was. <laughs> there we go. So we just put a bit more around like that. And we'll keep going. There go. You probably can't hear him as much as I can, but there we go. Okay. There we go. One more down this side. It's quite a big flower, but it's nice. And then we'll put our shading in in a minute, but we need to let it dry first because we've got to go back and and do the leaves as well. This is the thing with cocoa butter painting is the first layer is always a bit sort of, we've just got to get it painted and then we go back and start sort of adding in the other bits and pieces that make it a lot more kind of interesting. So we're still on paintbrush two at the moment, but we are now going to switch to paintbrush one because we're going in to do these butterflies and I don't want again to have to try and get a large paintbrush in that gap. So again, we will go into a smaller one. So we'll turn that around and we will dip that into the cocoa butter, make sure it's clean to start with. Grab some primrose yellow, this is. So again, I had a quick look online before I came on to look at butterflies and there's some very nice yellowy ones. So I thought I'd just check they exist before I actually paint them. Um, there we go, put that on there. 
All right, hold on. Okay, I can see what's going on now. So we'll mix that up. And then we'll just take that. So I'm gonna just paint them all the same, I think. We're going for sort of an orangey, yellowy type color scheme today. But we'll paint the middles black. We won't paint the middles completely black, but we'll paint. So what's nice about these butterfly patchwork cutters, if I lift that up, you'll be able to see all the details that are in the butterflies there. If you look very carefully, you'll be able to see see them all in there. So again, we'll come around there. Let's turn it round. Again, make it easy for yourself. Like so. Turn it. Okay, and then down. So I've left the middle at the moment. I mean, it doesn't actually matter if you paint the middle bit or not. Uh, it is easier to paint from the outside edge in. There's no question about it, rather than the other way around, because that's where obviously the line is. But they're quite pretty, aren't they? I do like butterflies. They're really nice. And these... Um, this set is particularly nice. I think Nikki has very kindly put some links up for these butterfly cutters and the poppies. So if you do fancy having a go at something like this, you can always pop over and have a look. I was just trying to give the poppy cutter a different sort of look, a different way, because otherwise you just associate them with being red and actually they're not at all. There we go. All right. Now, we have got, I'm going to do the middles of these. Now, what have I got here? Paintbrush, probably only one and two. And three, what brush is that? That looks like a zero. Hmm, magic. Okay, so we can go even smaller. We can go down to a zero brush. Although I do think this might, no, it says it's a zero, but I think it might be a zero, zero in another life. Right, so we're going to grab some black. A little bit of black in there. Well, we're going to put a speck of white in there just so it's not, jet black it'll still look black but it won't be quite as harsh and then we'll just put in some we'll just paint that middle bit there so i've got a much smaller brush now you see because i need to be able to get into that detail you should be able to see it coming up on the screen yes you can so that's good So, lovely. I'm going to switch brushes. Let's go to paintbrush one. Let's check there's nothing in it. There's a bit of yellow in there, so we need to get rid of that. So again, we'll just dip that into the cocoa butter. Now, I'm starting to run out of cocoa butter now, so I'm just going to take a couple of extra palettes and just stick them in there just to start melting again. I only need about four or five each time, so there's not many. So the bag goes a very long way. You won't find yourself going through these very quickly. And then we're just going to take some of the black with a slight hint of um, white in it. We'll just do the centre bit there. Let's go around. Just dab it in. Be careful because it's black. I don't want to end up making a mistake. So you could, if you're clever, change this into a different flower if you want to so there's no reason why you couldn't just market this as something else doesn't have to be a poppy let's turn that around there we go right let's leave that to dry so we'll dip that in there and we need to get the black out of the brush which is always a bit tricky we'll just keep wiping it until it comes out i'm twisting the brush not dabbing it because i don't want to end up damaging my brush Like so. Right, okay, let's go back to the green. Let's turn that round. So what we need to do here is just add in 
some of the moss green to some of the original color so i'm just keeping the two colors together i want to be able to see a comparison you see what i don't want to do is just cover up the whole thing and then not be able to see what's happening and then if we just take this color uh, we'll come down the side of one of these leaves to start with let's see what happens like that and we'll grab another brush and just bring that across and then we should be able to start getting some slightly more 3d effects maybe that's the idea anyway All this kind of detail actually that makes this rather than um okay right how are we doing let me look up on screen yep and then we'll do some down this side as well but not as much So the brush just fits into those um, the areas that have been pressed in quite nicely, actually. Like so. Let's have a look at that. Because you want the outline there, really, but you don't want you want some shading really mainly on the left hand side. We even went a bit darker down the bottom here. Where if you imagine it probably would be darker because that's where the base of the plant is. There you go. You can take that down there as well. We'll go the same on this side. going to turn this around I think it's going to make life a little bit easier for me there we go and then bring that across there and I don't want that colour to remain that dark so I'm going to go for a bit brighter again so if we go up a colour I'll just mix a little bit more of that lighter colour in hopefully that'll tone it down a bit there like so Let me turn that round that's not looking so bad is it what do we think and then again we'll bring that down there make it a tiny bit stronger maybe Set. So this is moss green for those of you that have joined later on, which is a sugar flare colour. And we're using sunset orange, which is the poppy colour. And we're using primrose, which is the butterfly colour. And then we've got black and white, obviously, for doing toning and various things. So that's why we've got those other colours as well. I'd say I haven't done any painting for ages, but I haven't stopped painting since I've come back, to be honest, on holiday. <laughs> I haven't stopped. I've got so much to do. Right, let's do the bottom of the stem. Let's make that quite sort of solid. How about that? Bring that round there. I could make that a bit darker, you see, can't we? But we'll keep it down one side because it just helps with the shading, doesn't it? Just be a bit careful then blending it in there. Now we've obviously got lines in these leaves. Um, what brush have I got? One. Oh, I might get away with it with paintbrush one. Let's try. So let's try some of the darker colour. If I take my brush, just the very tip of it. Weirdly, you've got kind of more control over paintbrush one than zero. Zero is very fine. And it's good for kind of getting in little tiny details, but actually I find paintbrush one is the one I tend to use, things like this. So just take the very end of it. I don't actually want those lines to stand out too much either. You know, I don't want it to look like it's been drawn on. 
I want them to be very much like the same sort of shade as the rest of the leaf so um, I don't want big thick chunky lines but it works okay if you just use the light brush there like that you see yeah that's that's good happy days right let's turn that round there and we'll do the same with that one so again we'll just start at the top come all the way down like that so it just fits in that gap really it's quite nice okay there you go so they're all there for you i've not added those in myself they are actually sort of already been marked in so um that's easy enough for you to do isn't it right let's get that poppy looking a bit more orange let's clean our brush out of the green Right, so we need to darken this up a little bit. So go back to paintbrush number two. I'm just going to use paintbrush three as well, but there has some green in there. And I definitely don't want green in my paintbrush because otherwise that will transfer to everything. So I'm just cleaning that out. And that should be fine. Right, so orange. Well, we'll grab a bit more orange. Let's mix that in there and see what we get. Poppies really are quite bright. I know we've started with quite sort of a, a pale colour, but that's all right. All right, there we go. Right, so you can see the contrast between the two, so we know we're definitely going to get a mix here. Let me just see what I've got in that brush there. Nope, that one's fine. Right, so let's start in the middle. And let's start with a bit of a bit of colour and see what we get, shall we? Let's see what effects we can get. God got excited then. I thought it was an ice cream van just arrived, but it's the sandwich van. Oh, how to be disappointed in one day. <laughs> we have a new sandwich van that comes round, but it's um with an alarm, but it's not as nice as the ice cream van, obviously. Right, so bring that up there. It's all happening outside my business unit today, isn't it? Dear me. How are we looking? Right, let's go around that way. And again, we'll do the same there. I'm bringing this up quite a long way because I'm going to go in deeper towards the centre of this poppy. So I'm just kind of trying to drag this colour through as much as I can. that bit there as well okay and then what we'll do here with this one now I always question this whether this is let's have a look what Marion's done here What's she done on hers yeah that is the outside edge I thought it was right so we'll come from the bottom here so paintbrush bring that up I don't know what we've got going on around there but we'll put some paint down there we go okay right we'll give that a minute so that it's got an opportunity to dry do some other magic with it of course now i have talked about these in the past they are a piece of equipment i use a lot of and these are called dotting tools um, we have these on our website in sets of five we actually do have some in stock at the moment which is great um, and at the end of them they've got the tiniest little circles or balls they're actually for nail art of all things would you believe but we've been well i've certainly been using them in cake now for quite a period of time and you can do some really nice effects with these um, the set comes with different little sort of balls on the end of them different sizes um, but i really like 
like them and I think they're really useful. So while that's drying, we're just gonna go into here. I'm just making sure I've got all the orange out of my brush, which I seem to have done. Just gonna mix up a little bit more black because I don't seem to have very much. I could do with a little bit more. And the butterflies I spotted this morning had little tiny sort of black spots on them in corners. So we're gonna give that a go. Let's see what that turns out like. If I regret it, I'll just paint them yellow. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine <laughs> I'm chuckling away to myself thinking it'll be fine so we'll take hold of this and we'll just put the dotting tool into the pane and then oh damn, let's get in there a bit closer I don't really want to do too many of these I kind of want to do some just almost like three in the top corner yeah that worked perfectly thank god for that you never know Okay, look at that. How cool is that? You know the butterflies I'm talking about. They're like the little sort of like cabbage white type sort of things. These aren't clearly, they're yellow, but that kind of effect. You'll never be able to do that with a paintbrush, whereas with a dotting tool, spot on. So I'm gonna do another one there, another one there, and then leave it. I'm gonna stop, because I don't want to end up in sort of dotting tool mania, you know, where you get carried away. So we'll do the same on this one. So we'll do one, so if you look at butterflies and they've got nice sort of little spots on them, you should be able to replicate that with one of these. So one, two, three. So it's sliding off a little bit because my sugar paste dried the other day. It's had 24 hours to dry. So if your sugar paste is a bit soft, you can kind of manipulate them in there a little bit. But mine isn't. It's all about the detail, isn't it? Well, I think it is anyway, personally. Right, one, two. I always take a picture of what I make, so you'll be able to see it online. You can zoom in as much as you like and see how I've done it. But I think you should be able to pick that up on camera anyway. Let me have a look at the camera. Yeah, you can see what I've done there. So I've made those butterflies. I don't know what, what they are. A bit more specific, I guess. Specific, specific. <laughs> right, let me just clear up this small mess I've got going on next to me. Okay, right, let's go back to the sunflower. No, oh, not sunflower. What am I talking about this morning? Let's go back to the poppy. Let's turn that round. So we're going to grab some orange. We're going to make it much more orange now, even more orange than it was before. So we've got three shades of orange going on here. And we're going to go right down into the centre here. And we're just going to literally bring that up a little tiny bit. So that the focus of this dark colour is right in the middle. Okay, and then obviously we need to, let's grab a bit more of that. Uh, where are we going now? We're going here. So we'll go down here along this line here. Go down there because we want that to stand apart, don't we? So if we put a dark, darker line in there, we should be able to make that work. How's that coming out? Oh, it's going all right, isn't it? We might come along here a little bit further. You have a much better view of this than me. I have to look up at the camera to see where this is going because I can't see that well down here because the light's shining directly at me. Well, you have a wonderful view. You see all my mistakes before I do. <laughs> Let's bring that up there. top edge there because we want to separate that petal there from that one oh 
are we doing? Oh yeah, that looks good. And then I think we'll make that a little bit darker down there as well. How's that going? Yep. A little bit more there. All right, we're just going to up the orange empty slightly down here. on there there we go right that's that so far now we're going to play with the dotting tool again and what we're going to do i'm looking at pixie's comment about it. it's dotting tools are better than sliced bread they come in handy i'm telling you who'd have thought it do you know what i don't even know how i, got, I think i got interested in them because i started doing this um i taught this uh mandela painting course and I got quite obsessed with them and then I started thinking well hold on a minute I can do this 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 and this with them and before I knew it I was using them continuously and she's right because I go looking for them now if I can't find them I'm like well where are they I need them because I'm using them quite a lot right let's put some dots on there so we've got our whoop, dotting tool which I just threw now we're going to turn that over and we're going to put some dots I don't want them to be too big or too many of them. So they make quite good for stamens as well. Look, don't forget that's only the inside of the poppy. So we won't be coming over too far, but I can actually go on top of this as well if I want to. I'm going to flip it over because the other side is smaller. So I can get some more detail in. I'll flip it back again because I've missed one. So if you wanted to turn this into like a zinnia or something like that, that has lots of these kind of um, things on their petals. You could always do that. Okay. Let me hold that up so you can see that. Oops, let's just clean the dotting tool for a second. Right, let me mix up one more colour. I'll just clean my brush up. I don't want any colours in there at all. Grab some of this white. Pop that in the middle there. I think I emptied the white everywhere this morning by the looks. White, white, more white came out. And then what we'll do just to soften the picture up a little bit, we don't want it to look like snow or anything, but what we'll do is we'll take our dotting tool again and we can just put in some little tiny sort of what can be represented like baby's breath. Um, by baby's breath, I mean gypsophilia. Which if we pop in near this poppy, we'll then soften it up a little bit so it looks a bit more softer than it was. Again, this is where the dotting tools kind of come into their own a little bit. And you can imagine it stood round there. Okay. Take some a little bit away from it. Don't want it to look like it's snowing. <laughs> There's no snow involved here. And we're just going to clip the edge of those leaves so it just looks like it's overhanging onto those like that and there we go how about that that's not bad is it for morning's work right let me bring this up so you can see it a bit more clearly so if i bring that forward okay so there we go so this is the patchwork cutters poppy cutter which i've painted in poppy colors that are current poppy colors so we've got an orange one in our garden at the moment we've also got yellow at the moment um, there is a lovely blue one around so if you fancy doing a blue one um, then i looked at butterflies before i came on and i saw 
um, these yellow and black ones. And I thought, actually, yellow and black, that's quite a good idea. So again, yellow and black, very small butterflies, but using the um, dotting tool just to do some of the detail on there. So the butterfly set does have a huge number of butterflies in there. So they are really, really lovely little butterflies to um, to put onto these cakes, cupcakes, anything like that, and then use that dotting tool for some of that detail. Don't be kind of put off by some of the um, patterns that are on these butterflies because I think actually they work really well. And I'll tell you the other thing these are good with as well, these butterflies, is if you're using like a luster colour, like bright gold, um, for example, it really picks up all the veining that's in these um, cutters. So if I go in a little bit closer, you'll see all the little vein work that's in these cutters and they're all like it. So they all do make quite a difference, I think, to um, doing the butterflies. Um, on cupcakes just a little bit of colour and then you're there but just remember as well I have actually done this on a blue I haven't done this on white I think a lot of people get carried away and they roll out their sugar paste they press in their patchwork cutter and then they go oh no it's white if you can change the colour just to a pale green pale blue pale um, pale blue pale green pale grey that's the colour I was thinking of then you will get a little bit more contrast on there as well. So you will be able to see lots of things going on there. So there you go. So I will, this will obviously video will stay on here. So you will be able to go back and watch it. Um, if not, I will be, here I am, popping it onto my YouTube channel at some point as well. So you'll be able to pick it up from there as well. Now, um, in theory, um, my other channel should be back. Let's Shop should be back on Saturday, but I am just waiting for various bits and pieces to come in. But I will put various announcements up on my Facebook page. But it's been very nice to come back onto Patchwork Cutters with the lovely Marion and do some painting um, i hope you've enjoyed perhaps a different way of thinking about the poppy cookie cutter uh, poppy cookie cutter poppy cutter rather than just using it in november when we would associate poppies with them all being red it was only the fact that i walked into my garden yesterday and saw all these colors and went I've got all these poppies in my garden and then went oh, why am i not painting the poppy cookie uh, the poppy cutter orange and yellow the colors that they are right now so go outside have a look see what you can find and if you can't find any go on google and you will see actually that there are quite a large spectrum of colors when it comes to the poppy so have a little look and see what you can find and give it a go and as i say paint yourself a plaque up it's too big for a cupcake but the butterflies are perfect for cupcake size but the poppy itself is too big for a cupcake but you can always use a side angle of it which i've done in the past as well um, to have a go there so there we are so lovely to see you all again i'm sure marion and i will make another date and i will be back on soon um, if you do have any questions about um cocoa butter painting or anything to do with that then do pop over to the cake school and have a look nikki has been putting up some links to the products for you so if you do want to get the poppy or the butterflies or any of the other cutters they're all on my website as well so thank you very much nikki for that lovely to see everybody i can't see you but i can see your names and i know who you all are um so thank you very much for joining me and i will be back again and i'll let you know when and we'll see you all soon take care bye for now